Welcome to Vectorio Space Age. My name is Nilaus, and you cannot imagine how long I've been looking forward to saying that intro line. The long-awaited uh, expansion for our beloved Vectorio is finally here, well, at least for me. The official uh, release of the DLC is on the 21st of October, but I've been given early access, thank you Voop, and allowed to share content with you on YouTube and Twitch starting today. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the ride. There will be a ton of content here as we explore the DLC together. The Space Age DLC, as the name suggests, is all about space. Space platforms, space ships, space exploration, and industrializing of new planets for additional new planets, so that's super amazing. Each of these planets have a very unique look and feel to them, as well as having interesting logistical challenges to overcome. Because the new content is primarily starting from the launch of the first rocket, I am building a starter base using my base in a book design, so that we can start exploring the new content in the very first episode, instead of going through uh, 10 episodes of playing basically a vanilla experience once again. This is what you see as I'm yapping along in the background. What you can expect from my channel in the future is extreme factorial coverage, which should not be a surprise to anyone. I played this game for almost 8,000 hours and I have created my first Factorio video for you on YouTube more than eight years ago. And since then I've created an additional 995 additional videos. So in those 8,000 hours and about 1,000 videos, what have I done? Pretty much everything, like lots and lots of vanilla runs, modded runs, uh, mega bases, death worlds and challenge runs and automations and all sorts of things, even speed runs have done. So that is, a, that is a lot of coverage and it's so good to see something new. About six years ago, I uh, became a full-time content creator and when I started, the only game that was any, had any kind of traction was Factorio. So it was quite a leap of faith to jump into that. So you can say that it's, I think it's fair to say that Factorio has been a really defining uh, part of my career and also part of my life for the past six years or more. And so, therefore, it is an absolutely... If you want to join me on the journey into Space Age, then consider subscribing to the channel. And of course, also let me know when you started playing Factorio in the comment section below. If you want more con Factorio content, and then I'm also streaming this live on Twitch TV slash Nilaus in the evenings at 8 p.m. Central European time. So feel free to come by, draw, uh, ask some questions, uh, be part of the exploration and design, because I have, even though I've had access to the game for a while, I have not... Uh, familiarize myself with it because I wanted to have the sense of exploration together with you in the community during our live streams. So it'll also be new to me. So that uh, should be something we should explore together. The base you're seeing being created in the background is created with 100% default settings. It is 100% biters, it's 100% cliffs, there are no mods, no console commands, and it is created in Space Age. This means it is achievement enabled, and I am, as usual, providing the safe game, safe game to patrons who are supporting the channel, as I always do. So thank you very much to everyone who's supporting, and then you have a, this safe game. This means that if you are a, a patron and want to get started with a fully functional, well-structured base on the first day of the launch, then you can download this safe game and get started. I have deliberately not researched any quality stuff or researched any, uh, launched any rockets yet, so that you can uh, get that experience for yourself when, when and if you load it. It is uh, highly recommended that you do not migrate existing saves to Space Age, but you start over. This is something the devs have been have been saying, and this is both because the tech would be unfairly unlocked because uh, some of the tech has been moved to other planets later on, and also the migrated base would then miss some of the benefits of unlocking new ex new uh, new content on new planets like module uh, high level modules, cliff explosives, spider charms, that kind of thing. The intention of this series is to explore the new content and not rush through the game, but to enjoy this first time experience together because there is no time like the first time. This means there will be episodes with progress in terms of exploration and tech, and there will be episodes deep diving into some of the new features in a more tutorialized way. The deep diving of new features will take place mainly on Twitch where, while live streaming so that we can design and discover together. So be sure to drop by on Twitch TV slash Nilaus. As usual, I will be, of course, be developing a lot of new uh, designs and uh, solutions to various problems and challenges, and these will be part of the save game and therefore also available to patrons as usual. Later on, when the game is more matured, I'll be making masterclasses with sort of dedicated uh, stamp down blueprints, but that requires a much more extensive experience with the game than we have currently. When starting up a new series like this, it's hard to figure out what to focus on first. There are so many new cool things I want to showcase and explore myself. This series is not intended for complete, complete beginners, but assumes that the audience has an experience with Factorio, so I'll focus on what is new and changed and only try to touch upon a single topic in each episode. In the first episode, we will focus on rocket launching and building a very first little teeny tiny space platform for space science. 
stuff like quality and train schedules and elevated trains are also something that we'll be looking at in later dedicated episodes. We are now in the game and it is a wonderful base. It is really idle here, so we can now start looking at some of the things that we want to do. We can go in here to look at it and the first thing we see is actually a new tech, which is super amazing tech. Like, look at this. This gives us plus 10% productivity on steel plates. Also, casting steel plate, which is something we get on Volcanos. But this is amazing. It's a little bit expensive, but certainly worth, worth it for sure. Uh, we have also quality. I have not researched it. I want to research it. Trust me, I do. But I'm not gonna. Because we're gonna leave this until the next episode. We're gonna be leaving this uh, list completely out. And then we're gonna be focusing on the rockets and a space platform and space science in this episode. So that is the plan. Well, let's have a look at how these rocket sh uh, rockets work. There's a really big rocket out of work. Really big difference. They have two rockets in them. That's really cool. So you can actually launch one and then the next one is already ready. So you can actually launch them quite a lot more continuous. So now we have actually eight rockets on standby here. And that's a, uh, that it seems like a lot, but we're actually going to need it. They are a lot cheaper right now. Uh, they, uh, let's see this one. Uh, oh yeah, I want to show something that is absolutely amazing. Hold Alt and click on anything. Then you open the... Factoriopedia here, uh, rockets silo, and like that there. And yeah, okay, mm, that's kind of not really what I wanted to see, <laughs> but that's a uh, it is really amazing. And it's something that when you're looking at something, you go like, oh, okay, let's figure out what that what that thing is. And you have all the items also from things that we haven't even unlocked yet that are weird and strange and much later. Right, so, but that's something we'll get to when we get to it. So here we now have it. This this has now new functions. You can either launch it with the items you put in manually. So you can put things in and then it says, okay, that's one ton. Okay, so that's how much, that's the cargo capacity. And then you can launch it in, but you need to launch it somewhere to space platform. And then you can create a new space platform, but you need to create a starter pack uh, in order to make it. Or you can travel to space, that has to be somewhere. And then there's an automatic version here where it actually functions as servicing logistics requests because the rocket silo is basically a logistics requester we are going to need to make some new things as well here we have over here we have a, a landing pad we want to have that this is basically a requester the request from orbit and down to to Navis. while this one is requesting from Navis and then sending it upwards so it's both the two directions that we need to make space platform, we need that. And we need a space platform starter pack. This is how you start making a space platform slash spaceship. It needs to start with a starter pack, but that requires space platform foundations. So the very first thing we want to do is we want to make a little factory for space platform foundations. And the thing is, this space, which is my base in the book, is you is actually had rocket control units up here, but they don't exist anymore. So we um, are actually going to use this space for building a new thing and let's have a look at it this is here and it is on a 20 second cycle and it needs 20 copper uh or so the oh, copper plates there we go so that is on schedule look at the right hand side on the tooltip it says crafting speed 1.25 it says 2.5 coils per second and this one is producing five coils per second so it's much easier now to see ratios uh, from these without uh, any mods so cool let's do that and then we're gonna get an, in an inbound and we're gonna get an outbound i'm gonna get you inbound and you're gonna get you outbound and then we're gonna get inbound here and a there that should be good and let's get that one that one and a there that's fine i'm gonna do that and then we have the it's no longer called flip and glip it's now called vertical with v or h with horizontal and you can flip most things there we go so that's going to be our design and then i want to tr kind of balance it out so that it doesn't conflict with this like this this is where we want it and then oh i was about to read a press h for a nudge but we don't nudge things in this game there we go that is uh one module two three four hmm five that should be fine right this is producing 0 0.25 so yeah this is definitely gonna be enough for us right now 
Well, it's actually going to be enough. And then we hook this up to the bus. And it's now ready to be hooked up. We hook up these lines here. Those are the last things we're going to get in. Then what I've done is I am just basically sending all this back. Uh, here's another little important thing. Can't be productivity moduling this. So we're just going to leave it as it is. And let's see. Yeah, well, that's working. I just want to see something coming out here. Um, that is... Oh, right. Of course, it's not working. Oops. There we go. It is now working. And we're getting the first little fragment out here. We're sending it all the way in straight in and straight over here. Why? Because this is where they're going to be requested. They're going to be requested into this. So that's where we want to make it. Uh, we also want to start making sort of a robo hop. We can't do that yet because logistics is not something we have available. Uh, logistics, there. It's not available because it requires now uh, space science. So one our objective today is to make space science. I'm gonna make some of these just to craft the stuff that we know we need and that one. Those are the things that we definitely need to have. So let's just put these in here and at least sort of get ready for Good. And they can also just be put into boxes here. There. And we'll then have to make it. The first thing we want to do is we want to make one of these. Just one. And let's see. We just go in here. Enable. And it is... Oh, we see more things that are not unlocked yet. Less than one. Because we only need one. And then I can also do the other ones. Because I actually want only one of the other ones as well. So that's the rocket silo. We want to have that at some point as well. A uh, cargo landing pad. Yeah. And we also need to make a cargo landing pad. So let's try making the cargo landing pad and the, uh, the the starter pack. The most logical thing is, of course, you go down here and pick stuff up. But it ends up here because there is a new function. And all of this is a new function as well. I just got so used to it. But now there's a one called trash unrequested. Because now you can actually build logistics group you can see i have made them into some logical groups that i find this useful so for example if i don't want to make nuclear i don't want to carry around the stuff for the nuclear power plant in my inventory but if i want to make a nuclear power plant then i can just instantly request everything to me but i don't want to have that here so uh, this is just a really nice way and that means you can sort of have those enabled when you're in space when you're on one planet when you're on another planet you can have different things in case of what you need and uh, they can also be upgraded. For example, if I don't want to work with trains on another planet, then I can just disable this one. And if I have trash unrequested, then as soon as I do that, then all my train stuff disappears. And if I then enable it again, then they come back. Well, for sorry, drone, sorry, robots, you're going to be working. Or, for example, let's say I don't want to work with all the military. We are now in a non-military setup. Then I can just disable all of that and then it disappears. It would actually be nice if I could collapse them as well. The, the fact that this one takes like one, two, three tiles is a little bit too much when it's collapsed. Because or if there was an option to collapse, it would be nice. Anyway, uh, that is how it works. Do I want trains? Nah, we're not going to work on trains. So let me just disable this. But I'm also just going to be uh, disabling this trash unrequested because we're going to be picking up stuff from the belt here to, uh, to make some of the new things. So we now have one of these starter packs and one of these cargo landing pads. Let's explain what they do and how they work. So if I set the trash unrequested, then it would have disappeared instantly as soon as I picked it up. We are going to be taking this one and we're just going to be sending it. Uh, actually, I can't. This is 8x8, so it's slightly smaller than the other one. And But let's build it out here. That seems like a good place. And this functions as a requester for things from orbit. So this is how you communicate. This is a requester that pulls things down from orbit. So we're going to make a, another logistics group. You can see that already exists. So we're going to, it just takes these ones, uh, space, age, science, hack. There. And right now we only have one of, oh yeah, we don't have it available. So never mind. Never mind. <laughs> that will be coming in at some point here. And let's also just make sure that it has a power line like that. And this one will then be, I think we can filter stuff. No, we can't filter stuff we don't have. Okay, so this one's just not filtered. But this is one that requests stuff from orbit and down. It can also be trash. So it. Um, we can also just put this into uh, a, a active, provider uh, active provider chest, but we don't have those yet. So the next thing we want to do is take this one. And then if I send my space platform starter pack, I smash it in here. Now it's up there. It weighs exactly one ton. It must be really lightweight material for such a massive building. 
and then we add a new space platform. This is the first thing you have to do to make something in orbit that you can work with. So we get a new pop-up and this one is going to call Navis, oops, Navis Science Platform. Now these platforms are both platforms and they're also spaceships. When we don't have thrusters, they're just a platform. And now we're going to be launching our very first rocket. And you can now see here, there is a, this is the surfaces. We have planets, is now is, and then platforms. You can see all the platforms we have, but it's not. It just says that the startup pack, the startup pack for this platform is underway. Da -da -da and we got a research technology space platform is done. Then we can use the arrow keys to move between the different layers. And then we are now in space. So this is the remote view. The remote view is the new map view. And it is, if you played space exploration mod pack, then you are familiar with the fact that there was a map view and there was a remote view. It's now merged together and it can do all sorts of cool things. It can do so many things that at some point you don't really care where your character is because you can do everything you want. Let me show an example of some of the cool things that you can do. Also, just uh, show it. So we're looking at this one and I know what you're thinking. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, damn, he has the uh, yellow assemblers. Or maybe you're saying green if you're weird. But anyway, uh, yellow, is, I, actually, now that I look at it, it looks remarkably like the same green color as the crap. Never mind, it's yellow. They're yellow assemblers. That's the way it is. Uh, <laughs> I want to put things in here. So you can actually do that. And then it'll actually queue up as a robot thing. Or you can do something that's even cooler. You can go in here. And I mean, I'm going to show like random things that I find out as like, go along you could do here and then I can say let's do this pattern there so now if I do an upgrade planner this one I can just right click it then it removes you can also do that from things in boxes uh, let's find something in a box somewhere that I want to like that one if I wanted to delete that I just right click it and then the robots can pick up that part pretty cool but that's not what we wanted we wanted to see if I now drag this over here then it just issues robot commands to put them in here. And you can also just remove them. Uh, likewise, this one really deserves it. That one deserves it. And you know what? All this deserves it as well. Ooh, not the last ones. Yeah. Hmm. That's not what I wanted. Ah, anyway, let, let's just do that. Bloop. There we go. And we got the steel. We'll take one more of those. Oh, yeah. This one is one we really want to. So this means that you can do basically what you want in, in the map view and robots will do it. So as long as you have robots, then it works really, really well. Now comes the time when we hit the tab, arrow down. This is our space design. Right. Let's have a look at and to explain a little bit how this works. So you need to make the space platform up here and there are you can't go up there you can't well you can go up there but then you're stuck inside this uh, the space platform hub so you can't walk around in space and there are no robots in space there are no power poles in space so how do you build things well if you uh, let's actually make a new one of this uh, I think I don't think I'm going to use these here so let me replace three with five and then five make that into something that we're going to use in orbit we're going to definitely need that we're also going to have uh, these cargo bay and that and that. We'll come back to what those are. Um, but the main thing is here, when we build this, you can see that they will build themselves with the stuff in here. Now, then it says, oh, we have actually built something that isn't available on the space platform, on this layer. So, for example, if I just plop this down here, then it brings a ghost and then it says, oh, you want one of those. Then... It says no rocket silo accepting requests from space platform. So what I'd want to do is if I check this, it will immediately respond by making a request to whatever is available in uh, or is requested from orbit. However, it will only send up a full, uh, full stack. So for example, in terms of, um, of assemblers, we don't want to send a rocket up with one assembler. But if we look at an assembler, uh, let's see, how would I do that in a smart like that? Then we can see somewhere stack size, stack size. Uh, there is there has to be somewhere where it says the how much. Oh, really? Oh, there we go. Rocket capacity, 25, half a stack. 
So this is what a key and key part for many things. Some things have our stacky really efficiently on the uh, on uh, um, on rope rockets, and some don't. For example, if we look at iron, for example, stacks to ten stacks, ten stacks. That's really good. And then I show. I want to see something if they nerfed it. Kovarek said he would want to nerf it. Yeah, he it nerfed. It got nerfed. 0.3 stacks. Well, 0.25 stacks. So something like ammo is severely nerfed because they don't want us to send rocket so ammo to space. They want us to craft ammo in space. So any ammo is super expensive to transfer to space. Too heavy for rockets. So if you want to throw nukes in space, you have to uh, you have to build it in space. It's really interesting. So this is kind of a new stack size thing, and most of the things is a stack size or a half a stack size. So that's how much uh, will be sent on a rocket. That's pretty good. Uh, we have unlocked new tech, and that was this new tech. So we now have new machines: asteroid collector, a crusher, and a cargo bay. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to start making them make them here so we can get a little bit of those um well actually we hmm, what are we, what's the smartest way of doing it i think we want to go up here and now you can see the request here has disappeared we don't want to send things up instantly because maybe there's some things that we don't want up here but on the other hand there will be i know kind of what i want up here we want like solar panels and assemblers and inserters and belts and undergrounds and um, yeah, s stuff like that. So let's uh, start making some of the things that we we have. These are requesting some stuff, and we don't have requesters yet. So we uh, uh, requested yet. So we're gonna have to feed these manually now because they will be switched to requesters when I have that. So now we have everything we need here. So we can actually start going up into space and start building it. So let's talk a little bit about the, what these things are. Cargo bay is. One of the uh, is the only kind of storage you can have in space because stuff like this passive parameters can't be built on the surface. The gravity is too low, and uh, wooden chests no, or there. Oh, oh, that's not what I wanted. Um, like any other chest, they can't. Oh, that's weird. How I'm clicking there. They can't be built here, so you can't build chests. The only thing you can build is a cargo bay. A cargo bay is attached to here, so you can build it bigger, but it has to be attached to this one. And another important part of this is each of those add 20 inventory size. So if you need a big storage, then you absolutely need more cargo bays here. I don't think I need it for this particular case, but I think we'll build it anyway, because I, I don't know, we'll, I, I'm building it uh, just so we can see. So that means now you can see here, this is requesting it. No rockets either accepting requests. And also it adds more of these requests up here. Now, um, then we have a, this is an asteroid catcher. Now this will not work because it's not a continuous area. So you'd have to work something like this. And then you can see the area that it picks up from, and then it will try to send out grabbers to grab these. And then in here, you can set up filters and we're going to do that. So what is the next thing? The next thing is a crusher. A crusher can crush metallic asteroid chunk into a lot of iron ore and then a little bit of asteroid chunks, 20% uh, asteroid chunk returning. Or the same with uh, carbon. Then it can make 10 carbon and then 20% uh, recycling. Or five ice. So this is interesting. There's 20 iron, 10 carbon, or ten, five ice. So ice is probably is less yield here. And assuming that there's the same amount of of, uh, of resource, or same amount of asteroids available, you can see they're floating around here. These small ones don't hurt the platform, so we don't need to sort of shoot them down. But if you're traveling between planets, then we are going to be bumping into to bigger asteroids, and they need to be broken up before they can be grabbed and uh, and do deal damage to us. So here we don't have to deal with any kind of uh, big asteroids. So we can just build it without uh, thinking about the fences, which is nice. And we don't even think about moving. So what we want to do is we actually want to start designing something. And I actually feel like it might be easier for us to get things up here so that they start building instead of building everything with, uh, with ghosts. I'm going to do something that you would not expect me to do. And that is I'm going to build a sushi belt. 
running all the way around here because I actually think it works quite well in this situation. Isn't that insane that they've designed, they, they made something that made me think that sushi belts are a good idea. I don't know if it's the best idea, but I think it's a good idea. Um, I'm going to build a little platform here. I don't know if this is going to be the final platform, uh, but it just gives us some breathing room. And what else do we need? I think we need some inserters as well. Longhand inserters and uh, just just trying to think about what we want because then we can start requesting everything in here. Everything we need. And what else do we think we need? Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. There's something that we absolutely need. We need some of this and let's get that. And I also need lights. So right now, just by triggering one of these, we'll be requesting it. So now we go back and now we enable all of these to send to work as logistic requests. And then it will just take one of them. It would be nice if it actually, yeah, okay. So this is now sending up rockets and it will figure out what it is, but it will request a stack of each. So what now happens now is that it'll just send out a logistics request. We'll see logistics robots coming in from the hub. Come on, where are you? That's weird. Why are you not coming in? I would have expected. It's not like they're coming like a million miles away, are they? Hmm. Here. Yeah, they're in route. Good. This one. They're in route. Okay. So once they're, they're in here, yeah, there we go. Something coming in. Oh, it's because they are right on top of each other. So this one is going to be the first one. 48. And once they're available, then they'll start sending up and they'll be available as, uh, as ingredients. There we go. We see the first one is ready. You can see that it, it's down here, and then when it moves up, that means it is fully stacked up. It's it's uh, ready, and it's already sort of requesting in for the next thing. Yes, finally some platforms. Oh, this is excruciatingly loud, but it works. We launch a rocket, and now you can see why you need multiple rocket launchers and why you need a functional base to start sending things up, because we really don't want to be in a position where I feel that, oh no, can I afford to send a rocket? You just get it in here, and you can see they are coming in. And then some of the stuff gets built, but it has to wait until we get some platforms here. So let's start working on some design work. Uh, that was actually a problem. I do actually want one of these to always be here because otherwise it doesn't request it. Uh, why does that say available on planet? Maybe that's because it's already inbound. It should be. Okay, so there. Now it's building. Oh, I love this part. This is so cool. Such a cool way that it's working. And these are, of course, just here just to trigger a request inbound. And then the good thing is that they send in a stack. It means that, well, when we need more, we take from here first. And only if we need more than 50 decided combinators. You can also later on just decide to throw them back. If you want to throw them uh, back down to the ground. If you don't want to keep it up here, let's say there's something really valuable that you only needed one of. But you have to send like a whole lot of them up there. It is possible to manually load your rockets and only send up exactly what you need. But I don't think that's particularly worthwhile. Let's have a look. Uh, now this is sending platforms. That is great. Those are exactly what we want to see. And the platforms are coming in super quickly because they're right next to us. And we also have a, a lot of platforms. I don't even think I need this many platforms. Ah, whatever. We might need it at some point. But uh, it's, it's a one-time thing. Built here. And then we should start seeing some platforms. And then we can start working on it. Like this one. Um, yeah. Space wise, this is an 8x8. Eight eight. So I need to sort of figure out where the middle is. That one. And that one. No, that's not. Oh, look at that. It looks so glorious. I love this. This is such a cool idea. And then they're coming in more. Look at that. So uh, organic. I don't know. And since these are already placed, that means they're already coming in. We can remove. And then let's see. This is a little concerning. Why is that? I have 10 here. I have 10 here. Isn't that a stack size? Yes, rocket capacity. Rocket capacity. Mm -hmm. This one. Oh, this is already delivered. Hmm. Hmm. Ah, right there. That's coming in. And the other ones will probably be requested after the platforms. So this is just, let's see. We're still missing a little bit of platforms. And then we need these two. On, oh, it's a, it's red because it's on the way, but it is available on the planet, so that's good. This one is en route, good. Requesting from Novice X1. Uh, do they have names? 
Why does it say X1? Hmm. And then, ah, there we go. Now these are being requested, and the other ones here don't request anything anymore, as far as I can tell. Yep, no more requests. That means they are done with the requests. Sweet! And then this is just the last two things that we need uh, in orbit. So glorious. There we go. We got our platform, and we got our cargo base, and now we have a big inventory instead. Right, let's... Mm, I don't want to de deal with this yet, because they are... I don't dare remove these yet. Okay, let's take you out, but I, I don't want to take both of them out. And I want to make sure that this is towards the middle. Uh, this is... Let's see if I can use something. One, two, three, four. That, that's the space. So I think that's a little bit out. And this one is there. So now these two... Oh, right. I should just have done like this. They are not aligned. They need to be aligned perfectly for some reason. That means this one. There we go. Perfect. And then I want to do the same thing on this side. And... There. It's a little bit complicated. I, I want to make a platform where these are equally distant. And we got everything in here. But they're not powered. Oh yeah! One thing that's kind of important to get in here. Solar panels. Let's get solar panels. That's the only way to get power up here. For now. Alright, so this is kind of the template I want. Uh, the reason is that this, if you look at it, oh, this is a, oh, why did I not think of it? Like, this is the best way to, to look at it. So they have a little bit of overlap uh, everywhere, so it shouldn't be possible for anything to sort of get by and without being picked up by one of these. And they're not really overlapping very much. Uh, and this is a small platform. The bigger the platform, the heavier the weight is. That doesn't matter as long as we don't move them, but uh, it it's something it just uses more resources so what we need to do now is we need to figure out that these ones grab stuff they're going to grab everything that comes in and then they're going to be putting it in so what i want to do is i want to put them on the belt or uh, on this uh inner thing here so like that like that like that and this is super important here's a little thing that always works when you insert on a belt it always inputs in the furthest away in the right hand side of the direction of travel that's weird, right? Which means that if I put in a here, 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 and here, they will all put in at exactly the same space, and that is going to be the inner lane in all cases. That's my hypothesis. Let's see if it works when we get it. Um, and the reason is because I want something, I want this to be made on the inside belt and only on the inside belt. Uh, because I want the inside belt to carry these what are they called? Ooh, oh, is that actually correct? Uh, oh, yeah, it's the middle. The middle. Okay, the middle. Okay, and the middle. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Here. Here and here. So that's now symmetric. We don't need to power it. So as long as soon as we get some power from... I mean... Like this, maybe? Ooh, nice. Like this. And maybe like this. Ah, not these two. And like this. So you can see we're missing a little bit of solar panels. So that gets us some solar panels. Oh, look at that. We're getting stuff inbound. Now, this is going to fill up. And when it fills up, it's going to be a problem. Uh, because then it jams. So we need to make sure that it does not jam. Well, how are we going to do that? We are going to set up some circuit network. And that needs to be that monitors all of this belt and this is one of the new cool features of the uh, of the expansion so we're going to be doing this and i'm going to check here and this one says read belt content hold all belts look at that it comes like that ah, it looks so cool i love this one which may, means now it monitors everything on the belt so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to set this as saying well how much you got of this uh if you got less than 20 you're good then you send a, a signal out that says Give me more of that. Cool. And let's do that for the other ones as well. There and there. And that will be... Not that. Um, no, yes. This one. This one. Yep. And the ice. 
there. Sweet. So now we just need this, these three, uh, these conditions to be used as input. Let's uh, also make sure that we actually visualize it somehow. Uh, like that, that, and that. Oops. Come on. And this one will be enabled when any signal inbound. I guess we'll just say any signal. Any signal is greater than zero. Okay. So does that make sense that these two are yes and this one is a no? Correct. We get too many iron locations. Great. So now we need to take the red line and then hook these ones up. And from here into that one. These belt, these pipes or this uh, can wires can luckily reach pretty far. Then I need to set here as set filter. So now I have control of what comes in. This one will only now get more ice inbound. Great. And that means the inner belt will never overflow anymore. Sweet. Awesome. Whew. Okay, so now we need to figure out what is it actually we want to do with these things. And the best way to do that is simply to hold Alt and click. And then we see this one mm, can be used in this recipe here. So we get iron ore. We need to figure out what it is we actually want. We're just, just collecting things. And we just got a research uh, that is... No, uh, this research. So how do we make science packs now? Ice, two iron plates, and one carbon. So that's uh, what we want to do. We can just go in here. And we see ice is made from this oxide asteroid crushing. Mm -hmm. And, oh, there's no uh, back button here. Uh, that one. And the carbon is made from a, uh, oh, gathered from flaming ash, ashland tree. Sure, that, don't get distracted. Uh, it's, it can also be made. But we want to make it from this one. We get they get it from the carbonic asteroid chunks. Sweet. So that means we now need the crusher. The crusher is going to crush. Crusher is going to crush here. Oh, there's something we need. There's something more we need. Um, That one. So now that requests something inbound here. Good. Because we want to make sure that we save on resources here. And if we had... Uh, quality items, we'd be using quality of all these things, but we're kind of saving the quality, so not just yet. Right, so this will be here, and now this is actually needs to be recycling, so I'm going to bring it in, but I'm also going to be pushing it back out. No, 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 no. Filter, damn it. Damn it. Uh, this will be that one, that one, and that one. It'll only be one of them, but um, here. So the stuff that we pick up just disappears. It's just gone. Uh, I think it was one of the rem the first ones where you sort of throw it off, off the center. Mm, I don't know. We haven't seen a use for that yet. Right, so this is good. So this one will actually just send it out here. Then I'm going to get it into a... Oh, we don't have that. And one of these. Which will now also be requested. And you know what? I'm just going to put this in here. Not because I want it in here, but because then I know that I'm... Hmm. Oh, we're not actually requesting these until... This has been requested. Ah, too bad. Uh, let's see. Can I just do this? And then... This is completely irrelevant. I just want to do it for this sake, so that I issue a command here, so it, it comes up here. This is not going to happen. Uh, it should actually be that one. Anyway, this is fine. I'm going to put it into these two. Uh, do I want to research anymore? The advanced combinators. Oof. I don't know how they work. We'll get those at some point. Uh, the most important thing with the space science is this one. So we'll get that when we get it. Now we need these two to be brought out and I'm going to bring it back on the outside belt. So we don't mix the inside of this uh, sushi belt. We have all the chunks. On the outside we have the finished product. So let's see if we can also get the other finished products there. Mm. No, not you. Carbon. Uh. And. 
ice ice baby there and they are going to be outbound outbound and then i'm going to drag them in here i think there we go and now we see the next problem uh, these also need to be constrained because otherwise the outside belt is going to be filling up. You can now see that we are also getting... That one is already way too high. This one's high. This is getting there. And that one's done. Cool. I am going to put these in here. Yeah, so now we need to have another set of here. Which will then be monitoring something else. Which will now be monitoring the finished product. Uh, no, not from the output, from the input from here to here. So that means now I'm going to be monitoring. This is iron plates, less than 20. Send an iron plate command. Yes. Next one is the carbon. And then send a carbon command. And the last one is ice. That is here, which will send an ice command. There. And we can see which ones are active and which ones are not active. Then they need to be hooked up to you, to that one. Oh no. Oh no. Do I want that to be like singular there? And then this one here. See, I kind of want to just set filter. Which is actually not a problem. I don't think that's a problem to do that. There we go. That turns off. And now it's a little bit overflowing. Uh, let's see, because some of this is way too high. Yeah, some of this is way too high here. But if we start consuming something... Okay, there we go. Now, these are still producing. And that means they're still consuming some of the chunks. So they will sort of activate, deactivate as they need to, to maintain 20 of each type here. 21, 20, and 14. So this is lagging a little bit. And likewise, there we go. Okay, so this works perfectly. Nice. So now comes the other part, and that is we need to make uh, here. Oh, why is that? Oh. Well, I want to place it here then. So I guess I need to redo this somehow. Maybe you can go down here. And then you can go here. And then we can do this. And that means I can build like that. One, two, three. That's the middle. And then we do the same thing on the other side. Yeah, And there are a million ways to do these kind of spaceships. And I'm sure that when I look back on this in just two weeks, then I, I will laugh at how silly this is. But hey, this is what I can do now. Uh, these will all be made into space science. And I would like to be able to use productivity modules. But I don't think I can. These ones can be moved in here. We can just trim this off because I'm not going to need that. And that means this can go here, here, here. Yeah. So that grabs everything in here. Lovely. I am going to need some productivity modules. Let's do two productivity modules. And then two. Yeah. And how do I do that? Yeah, that kind of doesn't work. But when I pick these up, all the materials just disappear. Like, they don't end up in my inventory because they, I don't have an inventory. I'm not here. I'm working on a remote view. Then I need the outbound. And the reason why I'm going to do it this way is because I would want to do it here. But you can't output back into this. You can, you can output back into the big box. Sure. But... I can't output, input and output from the cargo base. That's a balance issue or a balance thing. It's not a bug, definitely not. It's because they don't want us to use these cargo base to sort of lead it over here and then use it uh, as a sort of a, a, an instant teleportation of resources. 
So there's one box, and then this is just wasting space in order to make the bo box bigger. Oh, we didn't get these. Uh, okay, never mind. Uh, let's not do that. There we go. We don't want to request these. And that goes in. That goes in. And then goes in here. Sweet. Oh, why are they not coming in? Oh, we need three more. Hmm. Right. I like this. I like this a lot, actually. But I don't know if power is working. We can click up here. Oh, no, it's not working. Uh, let's uh, get more power then. This looks looks like an option. Here and here. So that should be better. Let's have a look and see if that helps with our power. Barely, but yes. And let's also just make one out here. Because that's there's room for it. And then we can just trim off sizes here. Look at that! The blob is complete. I think. I think this blob is pretty complete. Uh, except for the stuff that isn't working here. So now we are actually generating some star science packs. Yay! Uh, when I walked through this one, there was one thing I did not talk about, and that's this part here. This is basically the train schedule thing. And uh, you can see here, pause thrust and automatic. This is where we can send it up to go to other platforms. Um, read speed, read damage taken, ah, read moving from, okay, interesting. And then you can build here locations and you can down here, you can set int build interrupts to refuel or go back. For example, if damage taken, then go back or something like that. Advanced stuff later on. Uh, let's have a look at ratios. This is produ uh, producing 0 0.4. So a little bit of calculations, 0 0.4 times six of those, that is 2.4. Per minute per second times 60 that is 144 per minute that's pretty good pretty uh, decent here and consumption wise it's 0 0.14 uh, iron for example and that's times six so it's 0 0.84 si uh, science and or iron and that is more than what we have over here this can produce 10 per second and let's have a look is anything oh we can just look if anything is online yeah so it looks like we will always be starved on the ice um, the ice here is just not able to, well, it's almost able to keep up, but it just looked like, because I, from the ice, I only get five while I get 10 from carbon and 20 from uh, metal. So ice will understandably always be lacking a little bit, but hey, it looks like it's working and it seems like it's almost keeping up or it is keeping up. That means now we have a healthy supply of science packs and all we need to do now is use our what is it called? Cargo landing pad. To set this one up. Oops. To be requesting. Only putting that one out. And we can now space age science pack. Those are here. Do we want 200? Yeah. Just get 200 inbound. And then what we'll see is it'll just sort of drop down from orbit. It doesn't require anything. It doesn't cost anything. They just poof, poof, poof. There you go. They just, oh, they nice. They fly out from a random one of these. Nice. And they go down here. And as long as it keeps going, that'll send out. I don't know if it sends out. It doesn't seem to be sending out a stack at a time. It seems to just be sending it out continuously, which is pretty cool. So it sends out. And then we get the logistics system, hopefully, in progress once it trickles all the way down here to our science pack, science production facility. That's pretty neat. And let's look at our science pack platform. This is... Like, from a design perspective, I love this part. Like, think about how much of a different design philosophy that I have now than I usually do. Like, I built a sushi belt, for God's sake. You can get a sushi belt. And I now control things with circuits. You don't have to do that, but I think it's pretty cool that you can do this, controlled with circuits. Some people just prefer putting everything in here and then uh, just using this box as input outputs for everything. But I actually like this sushi belt because now I can, can produce the chunks up here and then I can consume them down here. Really neat. Uh, this might be something I'm recurring. I, it's something I really like right now, but you never know uh, if that's gonna be continued to, to work like this. Maybe there's some evident flaws in this that we'll, uh, we'll have to, to uncover at some point. But this is our first little spaceship. I love it. And down here, and we can see the logistics system is operational, perfect. Right, and that is going to be the end of the very first episode. So I hope you have enjoyed this very first episode of 
Factorio Space Age. Oh man, if I had said space exploration, I would have to redo the entire recording of this episode. Good thing I, I said space age. Great. So <laughs> first, first episode complete, there will be many more. I'll be releasing one video every day. I will also be streaming this on Twitch, on Twitch TV slash Nilaus at the uh, at 8 p.m. Central European time most most days, but maybe starting earlier on the very first day. So I hope you like the video. Let me know in the comment section what you think, what you like, what you want to see more of. If you have some specific questions about some tech you want to see, some things, if how they change, come to the live stream, then we, you can ask it uh, directly and we can take a look at it immediately. Thank you very much for watching. I hope that you have liked it and I'll continue with this tomorrow with more episodes. Until then, take care and stay effective.